So the lights are up and this is the pre-fish water change. Let's get an update on the 265 gallon display. So here's the lights that I've got for the aquarium. Uh, they are really simple. They're little spotlights. You can buy them off Amazon. They're very cheap. Who knows how long they'll last. If they last a year, I'll buy more. I do like the effect they have in the tank. I currently have four lights, two bright white and two warm white. And I've got two more bright white coming because the tank is going to be very tan and loaded. So I don't mind having a little cooler light hit the tank. This is the controller that has the adapter that goes to the wall. And then this is a remote control. There is a remote control you can use to control the intensity of the light. And there's some programming that maybe you're supposed to be able to do with it. But to be perfectly honest with you, the lights don't even come with an instruction set. So I have to go online and find it. I'm sure they're just really cheap Chinese made lights. This is the junction box. And the junction box, this one can hold six lights. Uh, but you can buy them to where they hold up to 10 or 12 lights, I think. I should have gotten one that holds eight, but I'm going to see how well this does with just six. It's pretty bright with just four. I think two more lights is going to make the difference for me. What I've done is I have put some cross beams across the ceiling over top of the tank. And all I'm going to do, these are sticky pads, and I'm going to glue them or stick them in the place that I want them to be. And then they've got some screw holes. And I'm just going to screw them right into the wood of uh, the cross brace. And then you can adjust them for the angle you want the light to go down into the aquarium. And I'm going to turn them so that they are facing in towards the middle of the tank. So let me install these and then we'll take a look at how they look over the, over the aquarium. Okay, so these are my two white lights. And I want to put one white light towards the back corner and I want to put one white light towards the front middle corner. I can reach it. So these are my yellow lights. I'm going to put one on the back corner towards the other side. And one towards the front corner on the side. So when I get my other two lights, my two bright lights, one is going to go right here and one's going to go right there. And those are the ones that are going to point right down into the flow. So they're going to create most of the uh, shimmer effect that you see on the bottom. These in the corners and these on the sides are going to be planted, are going to be pointed away from the back and away from the sides. That's going to create the shadow effect where you don't see so much around the edges of the tank. At least that's the goal. The screws are really, really small, so I'm just going to install them by hand with a little screwdriver. Now I can just angle the lights however I want to angle them. I'll angle them a little more carefully whenever I actually turn them on and see the effects it has in the tank. And right about now, the furnace or the water heater or something really loud turned on in the room so you could barely hear my voiceover even though I'm wearing a lavalier mic. What I'm telling you here is that the manufacturers of these lights did not put any kind of screw holes or any other way to connect the junction box to this board. So I'm just using some double-sided sticky tape to hold it in place. There's almost no weight on this junction box, so it's probably not going to fall off. Then I need to put the power adapter into the junction box, and the power adapter does have screw holes. And they use the same small screws that came with the lights. The power cord plugs into the adapter and there's plenty of length in the cord to make it to this outlet that's in the ceiling. So much so that I'm going to wrap it around this board a few times to take up the slack. That was actually pretty convenient. Almost as though I planned it that way. I, I didn't plan it that way. Sometimes you just get lucky. 
Then each of the cords from the lights plugs into the junction box and we're good to go. And the cords from the lights will also wrap around those 2x4s. I simply cannot express how delighted I am that that worked out. So we're filling up on the pre-fish water change. I did about a 50% water change, changed the socks. The water's looking pretty clear, the lights are set up, the heaters are working, so the water is maintaining about 76 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to fill the tank up with water and let it sit overnight to get the temperature back up to where it is supposed to be, and we're going to put the first fish in the tank. That's what I like right there. That is that shimmer effect on the bottom of the tank that we're getting from those spot LED lights running through agitation on the surface of the water. I think it looks really cool. So I can't put it off any longer. It is now time to put the first fish into this aquarium. And the fish that I'm going to put in it are actually in this quarantine tank. They've been here for quite a long time. This is Geophagus neva. It comes from around the city of Neva and the upper Magdiana drainage, which is one of the central mountain river systems in western Colombia. I have four of these Geophagus neva. You can think of it as kind of like a Geophagus steindachneri, a red hump Geophagus, but instead of being red, it's blue. Um, the males will get a pretty good size. The females stay quite a bit smaller. Up in the 180 gallon tank, I actually have a pair of Geophagus Didacmeri, the Red Hump Birth Eater, and they're eventually going to go into this tank as well. Purists are going to say, oh, don't put them together, they're going to hybridize. You're right, they're probably going to hybridize, but I'm never going to collect any fry, and there's going to be pike cichlids in this tank, and there's going to be catfish in this tank. They're going to eat any fry that are produced. If I really want to be able to spawn uh, Geophagus neva, um, I'll be able to tell the difference between the males and females of both species and if I can just I can pull them out if I really want to save some back. Uh, there's also another fish in this tank that is a little pike cichlid and it's not very big. It's only this big. Um, so I'm probably going to end up leaving it here in this quarantine tank and feeding it up a little bit before I put it in this tank because there's some pretty big pikes that are up in that 180 and I think this little pike would become a meal pretty darn quick. There is another fish in this tank that I'm thinking I want to put in that aquarium, but if I do it, it's going to kind of break the rules on this being a Columbia Aquarium. There is a Pseudocanthicus species L117 Pleco in here, one of the Lepardus types that's got the red fins and the green and the black spots on the body, and I've had him since last fall when he got him about this big at the uh, Cataclysm event, and now it's up about that big. Um, it's been living in here ever since. It's just fine. Um, this is about the big tank here. It's about the only tank I can put it in. Uh, I'm not really planning on setting up another aquarium. It could stay in this tank indefinitely, but eventually I want to get into a bigger tank. Decision made. The Pseudocanthicus and the Pike Cichlid are not going to go into the big aquarium today. I'm going to get these Nava out of here and then I'm going to take the next couple of months and I'm going to feed these pike cichlid and the pseudocanthus pretty heavily and I'm going to get some size on both of them and eventually I will end up putting them both in this tank. So compromise. They are going to go in, just not today. So these are kind of interesting. You know what that is? It's not a coconut. Anybody guess? Not going to tell you now. I'll tell you later. Okay, that's all for the Geophagus neva. So what this is, this is a Brazil nut pod. And in Peru and other places in Brazil where they, they grow Brazil nuts, sometimes these are the last trees that are sitting out in large fields because they cut down all the other trees for cattle farming and they leave the Brazil nuts. But when you think about a Brazil nut and it's that kind of a wedge shape, Imagine this being like an orange, except it's hard, and inside are the wedges of the Brazil nuts. And then what people do is they collect these, they chop off the top, they pull the Brazil nuts out, and this just becomes waste. But it's hard as a rock, it sinks really well, it very rarely will even start to fall apart in water. Definitely one of those... Uh, 
things that we should be getting from South America for our fish tanks that we just almost never do. The water temperature and the water parameters are the same between those two aquariums. I'm just using my tap water in both tanks. I'm going to show you something else that's nice about having a separate sump like this though. When it comes to acclimating fish, all I really need to do is put the fish in a bucket and just bring out small amounts of water from the sump and let them acclimate. So I'll let that sit there for you know 10 or 15 minutes and then I'll add a little more. I'll probably let it go for maybe two additions of water and then I'm going to let them go in the tank. And here we go. The fish are in. Now we can call it an aquarium. Now I'm going to back the camera up a little bit and let you look at the tank as I adjust the lights so you can see what I mean by trying to create an infinity aquarium. All six of the spotlights are on the tank and you'll notice that the back left and the front right have those yellow spotlights and then the other four are the bright white. And I hope you can see in this video that the lights are currently pointed more towards the center and the front of the tank so that the back corners are very shadow. So I'm going to go and leave the camera in the front of the tank and I'm going to come back here and move the lights around so you can see the effect. So this is the tank as is, and this is the effect that I'm looking for. You can barely make out the shapes of the background in the far back of the aquarium, but the front edges in the front of the aquarium are brighter. Fish can move in and out of the light and then go back into the back where they'll kind of disappear. That's that infinity look. The whole idea is to have to ask yourself, how big is this tank? I do apologize for the cloudiness, but until this tank is well established, I think it's something that we're going to have to deal with. Eventually, it will be crystal clear. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn every single one of those LED lights so that they're pointing straight down. And you're going to see what the effect this has on being able to see the background and the sides of the tank. This isn't a bad look either, and I can certainly see it's a lure. I do like the fact that you can see all of the structure in the back, but I don't like that you can see the fixtures at the top of the tank. And because the lights are back towards the back of the tank, now the front is extremely shadowed. I can fix that by putting a strip light on the front edge of the tank, which I may end up doing eventually. The first thing I'm going to readjust is I'm going to take those lights that are on the back corners of the tank and I'm going to point them towards the front center. Watch what this does to those back corners. They just disappear. And then I'm going to adjust the front row of lights so that they are pointed towards the front of the tank and watch the structures in the front of the tank reappear and become highlighted. I like the look of this aquarium and I hope you do too. And I am chomping at the bit to get this thing full of fish because then it's going to be a lot more active with a lot more things moving in and out of the light. I also look forward to when the water will clear up because then this is going to be crystal clear and it's going to be much easier to see the definition on the structures in the middle and towards the back of the tank, even though they're shadowed. Appreciate your patience with some technical difficulties in this and previous videos. I recently upgraded my camera as well as my sound system and I'm still trying to learn how they all work. 
Every time I think I have it figured out, there's another cable or something that I need to make it work better. Thank you for watching Ted's Fish Room. If you like this kind of programming, please hit that subscribe and bell button so you don't miss any updates. See you next time.